Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for attending today. Uh, my name is Andrew. I am the Director of Product at Hospitable.com. Um, today, we are here for a Hospitable Masterclass uh, where we invite industry experts uh, to share their expertise with us. Um, so this is, this is not going to be too salesy. Um, we are here to give you actionable feedback and advice uh, from people in the know. Um, today's guest is, is Chris Mon. He is the CEO and founder of IPRAC, and that stands for International Property Rental Approval Certification. It is a global accreditation of trust and certified short-term rental properties. Um, Chris is here to share how to help build credibility. Um, we're going to talk about things like trust marketing, um, not marketing just your, your rental, but also your, your brand and your business. Um, so that's going to be an exciting thing. If you're not familiar with uh, what hospitable.com does, uh, we are a short-term rental software company, um, like a PMS, that we're here to save you time. Uh, we are founded in 2016. We've been helping make managing operating short-term rental as trivial as possible for over 10,000 hosts now. Um, so that's what we do. We're on Airbnb, Booking.com, uh, VRBO. And recently we are have just been launching our direct booking solution. Um, so we'll, we'll be talking a lot about direct booking. Um, we can throw in some, some updates on how our project is going during this. But uh, without further ado, Chris, do you want to give us a little intro to IPRAC and what you do? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So, yeah, my name is Chris Morn. I'm the CEO and founder of IPRAC. Um, I think you mentioned it before. It stands for International Property Rental Approval Certification. So we're a global certification that we verify legitimate operators and property managers to basically give them the credibility and, and trust and reputation so that basically consumers can book directly with 100% confidence. So it's it's a global accreditation, but of course, we probably renowned as well for a, a great conversion tool for direct booking. So it's um, we were founded in, well, the idea came in 2014 when a family got frauded here in the south of France and they lost £15,000 to a scam. So basically, they booked, a web, they booked a villa on a website that they thought was legitimate, turned up in, in the, at the airport, got a taxi to the villa, Villa didn't exist. Family of five sitting on the side of the road, suitcases, yeah. not speaking the language, £15,000 out of pocket, scammed. So they contacted us and we found basically that, um, you know, that this wasn't, this wasn't like a sole incident and it was happening all over the world, you know, like people were getting scammed through, you know, booking fraudulent, fraudulent properties. So I decided that we would try and build a solution to that. And that's how IPRAC was, um, was founded. So it was, uh, took us two years to build it. And we launched in 2016. And today we are just over 14,000 members across 28 countries. And most of their members are property managers, like professional property managers. But we do have about 30% of that membership is private owners who also look to operate off OTAs like Airbnb and booking.com, but also look to try to convert a little bit of that booking over to direct and they use IPRAC certification to do that. So cool. you know, we're doing good work. We've got a long way to go, but um, that's where we are today. No, that's a, that's a heck of a founding anecdote there uh, on that scam. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so the format for today, um, Chris and I are going to do a little bit of a, a of a chat. I have some questions for him. Um, you can ask your own questions. There is a and a function on Zoom, so please use that. Also use chat. A lot of you are already in there. Um, hi, Chris. Hi, Mario. Um, hi, Mimi. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, chat chat away. Um, but really, if you do have a, a question, the, the Q&A function is, is easier for us to find that, so it's more likely that we'll get to your question uh, if you come up that. So at any time, um, go ahead and throw some questions in there, and we'll get to those at the end. Um, this is being recorded, um, so just uh, a note. And yeah, I think I think that's about it. We can kind of jump into the questions. So, um, Chris, I think I told you before we we, we chatted briefly that um, I mean, when I was getting set up with Direct, um, what we're doing on on our premium side of the product, which is kind of like the turnkey full solution version of Direct, kind of a hybrid of an OTA. Mm -hmm. I, we were implementing guest vetting, so all of our bookings that go through our Direct premium line. We are hospitable is the customer of auto host. We do guest vetting for every everything because we're the merchant of record for the transactions, which means we have some liability, some risk. So we've had every guest that comes through that system and we're getting set up and I'm kind of like, 
you know, this would be nice for the host too. Like I, we're, uh -huh. we have liability and risk in the transaction. We're only looking at one party, right? And so yeah. I kind of organically came to this question of like, is anybody vetting hosts? And yeah. then we came to, we found you guys uh, at IPRAC. Um, is, uh, I assume from the guests, they're, they're also having the same kind of question about like, is anyone vetting this host that I'm you know, making a direct booking through? Well, absolutely. I mean, you'd be surprised how many, you know, guests. I mean, let's look at the consumer here from like, and this is one of the problems that I think our industry has is they are very self-focused and not putting the, what the guest actually feels because it's important obviously to to vet the to vet the guest absolutely because some of these assets are really expensive you're managing them for owners some of them are your own so asset management is a key and you've got to know who's staying in the property but at the same time you reverse that over and hosts are looking at thinking well I'm I'm a trusted guy or a trusted lady or a trusted company um, people just trust me, but they don't. This is the this is the thing. Nobody just trusts anybody like and just because of that the, like of who they are. So you have to build that reputation and vetting vetting the host so that a guest can see that this host, this property manager, has gone through a robust you know, like a robust certification process that gives them credibility then that is also important because it's reciprocated in a way where, okay, I'm getting vetted, but also you. So the transaction is based on trust. Right. And every transaction, whether you want to call it in short-term rentals, is based on trust. So the base of everything is trust. So you've got to have trust with the guest, but also the trust with, with the actual host. So we call it what we do at IPRAC is we're building that bridge of trust. So the, And that's where there's there's a lot of lost bookings in that space. So when you can build that space of that bridge of confidence and trust between a guest and a host, then there's a lot more bookings take place. Yeah. That's for and sure. So there's yeah. so it's important for both, but there's not many, I mean, I know that there's many, many companies doing guest verification. Um, but there's only IPRAC can do, you know, in-depth host verification. And right. that's, where, that's where I think we come in and make a really big play within the industry to help the industry grow. Yeah, we, we got this feedback on the way. I mean, obviously, guests can fall out of your, your sales funnel for a direct booking at, at any point. Um, and they're kind of picking up breadcrumbs along the ways of, of either red flags or, or things that are giving them positive signals. Um, so we had some feedback to our early the sites. So we have like we have 10 different templates um, that help a host spit out a direct book, book website as turnkey as possible. Like we take your content from your OTA listings and we will spin up a, a direct booking site for you in a matter of seconds. Um, and those are getting better and better. Um, but the early versions, we were getting the, the, the kind of the trust feedback from our host. It's like, hey, your credit card page, like this is a pretty early version. Like I, I need this to be very trustworthy. People are putting in their credit card. This has to look like I'm not some like, you know, mom and pop shop or I am an existing business or, uh, you know, an established business at least. Um, and yeah, a lot of sites are like, yeah, you can put your brand on there. I want people to know this is hospitable and I'm not just a random Joe, you know, schmo on the, on the, on the street. But normally the credit card side comes at the end. Yeah. So you got, point. Get, you got, you got to get people there first. Yeah. So nobody yeah. jumps in. So this is what we were talking about previously about that guest journey on a direct booking website. It's about getting that guest onto your homepage. And if that guest doesn't feel that they're on, that they are automatically in the right place to solve their accommodation solution, they're not going to stay. And that's why a lot of the direct booking websites have a really high bounce rate percentage because People are arriving on a homepage and within seven seconds, they just don't feel the confidence. They don't feel the trust. They don't feel the brand reputation. So they're automatically from a subconscious point of view, yeah. they're leaving because they just don't feel that instant, that reputation so to follow it on, to go to the next page or navigate through your website. Yeah. And I mean, there's, you know, building a direct booking website, you just cannot throw something together. And, and host four pages with an about us page, a couple of properties, and it's just not going to work. It's yeah. just nobody's going to find that reputable and and enough trust behind it for them to say, well, I'm going to give you all my hard-earned money. So the, nine times out of 10, they'll jump back off 
and go to an OTA or somebody that they trust. You know, I mean, you, you talk about people who do spend in, you know, invest in marketing for direct bookings. But what they do is they spend money, time, bringing in, the, like, like generating the inquiries. But all you're doing is wasting money because you, you're directing Not converting. a website that nobody trusts. So you're far better building a trust, a trusted website, a trusted brand, so that then when you start your marketing, you're actually bringing people to a trusted website and not like a half decent, you know, product. Because at the end of the day, if you're not investing heavily in your website, in your brand, then you're not going to get direct bookings. That's just a fact. You yeah. know, and, I mean, and we could debate that all we want, but nobody's going to book with people that they don't trust. And they don't, once they've left your website, they're not coming back. So you've wasted so dollars. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of a nice segue into, yeah, how you get into not just, I guess, marketing to develop lead gen that might, might die, but um, kind of like the longer run game on, on trust marketing. Um, I know like if I'm going to, if I, if I'm feeling at all suspicious about, about a site, I'm probably going to do my own kind of like, kind of what Autohost does on the guest verification side is I do kind of social verification. Right. And that's the easiest thing that I think a lot of users are savvy about is I'm going to go check out your Instagram. I'm going to check out your Facebook. I want to see a paper trail kind of, you know, I want to see that you're, you're in business, you're, you're, you're doing activities, you know, you're, you've been around. Um, yeah. How do you approach the, that idea of trust marketing? Yeah. I mean, this is, you know, I mean, look, product marketing and trust marketing are both very important for a short-term rental business, right? That's for sure. So there's no, there isn't one better than the other. The fact is you've got to know what the difference between the two. Okay. So like product marketing is all about the product, the service, the price. And a lot of people are doing that on a constant basis through social media. They're putting just posts out like, you know, this three bedroom apartment, um, you know, 10% discount if you book direct and a few photographs and that's it. But that's not building any kind of reputation or trust. So that's when you look at product marketing, putting your product out there into the market. Okay. But trust marketing is a different, it's a, it's a longer game, but it should run simultaneously alongside your product marketing. So you should have a structure between your tr product marketing and your trust marketing. And trust marketing is all about bringing in the values, bringing in the values of the company and more about the trust factor rather than trying to force product down people's throats first. Because once you can build that trust, then you can convert. You can't do it the other way around. Okay, nobody's mm -hmm. gonna nobody's gonna book until they trust you. So the the fact that you can long term trust marketing is about bringing people into your you know the company, the founders, why it was founded, what your mission statement is, the values behind the company, why you believe trust is the biggest pillar of your organization. When you start talking with that kind of language, people relate to that as. Ah, this, this is a trustworthy company. This is a trustworthy brand. They've got values. They think about their guests. They put their guests first. Product says that you're putting revenue first. Now, that's just yeah. a subconscious, you know, like a, a consumer looks at that. Consumers are very selfish. They want everything for them. So they're looking for the best price, best product, but they're also looking for somebody that they can trust because they don't want anything to go wrong. Yeah. So... Awesome. Yeah, so you've got to look at building trust marketing and trust content into your website, for sure. But at the same time, you've got to do your product. But don't just don't deny the fact that trust marketing is going to be what builds the reputation and the trust in your brand. And that's what's going to be on the long term is going to build your direct booking business. Reputation, trust, confidence. And that's where the trust marketing comes in. So both at the same time, but separate. Well, it's it's the hardest to fake, right? So I mean, like if, if you're if you're looking at a, a you know a scam, a scam artist, what they're going to do? They they can't fake years of you know social posts of you maintaining your properties, building your properties, you know, spending time on you know charitable causes, those kind of things that that show what your values are. That that is really hard to fake. Okay. Maybe with in the well, age of Chat it GPT, is, it's getting easier and, no, and AI images. Right. But you're yeah. right. You're right. But but fraudsters are getting very more, they're getting very sophisticated in how they can operate. I mean, 
you know, with the development of AI and things like that, you can quite easily use fake reviews and backdate them. And yeah. they're going to, they, fraudsters are going to high levels to be able to convince consumers that they're legitimate operators because there's too much money in it. Like yeah. 10 years ago, fraud was really kind of basic. The websites had a lot of spelling mistakes, very basic. You know, like the pictures were like, you could tell the pictures were, weren't of quality and you could tell the pictures were taken from other websites. But today, some of the fraudulent websites that are out there are probably just as good, if not better, than some of the professional operators, which is frightening. But they understand the level of money that they can make in, in such a scam, then it's worth the investment for them. So we've got to be, we've got to be careful about how we talk about fraudulent operators and say, like, they don't... They're not just kind of Jim in the bottom in his back, you know, in his back room, kind of trying to scam a few people out of a couple of hundred dollars. These are like organizations who are really putting it together, you know, like mm. really structuring the marketing. They're building websites. They know certain things like, you know, key events like the, like the Super Bowl or the Cannes Film Festival. They know where the money is. They know what, they, you know, they're very structured people. And it's why the IPRAC plays a role because. You can build good websites, you can make fake reviews, you can put fake um, accreditation logos on your own website. IPRAT is completely different because you can't duplicate the IPRAT logo. You've, you can't copy it. You can't go through the process if, you're not, if you haven't gone through the process. You can't copy that. You can't become IPRAT approved if you haven't. Okay. So, so yeah, let, let's talk, let's talk about that then. So like, yeah. okay, I've done, I've done all the things that I'm trying to convince, but I need something that's actually verifiable. Um, and what you guys do is you come in and what are you, what are you validating that about me? That is, makes me a, a, a not a fraud. Like how do, yeah. how do you well, do that? We do two types of membership. So, I mean, the membership for a property manager, we're, re we're verifying the business. So we date, we do a deep dive into the business and the directors and the owners, all the social media accounts, the bank accounts, KYC kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah, all of the phone numbers, the emails. Um, so we, we know we do a, a big deep dive, and we've got like a we've got a structure in place where we can we've got about 27 checks from all of the data that we receive in the application and all of the supporting documents. We've got a process that can go in place where we can do certain checks on. You know, like say in the UK, you can go into a company's house and see who the director is when it was founded, whether that director's passport's linked to that, whether the bank account, the phone numbers are registered. We can do all of that through certain checks. And the same with like Google recognition on the photo reverse. So we do a big deep dive into, into what who that agency is. And no fraudster is going to go through all that because some of the supporting documents we ask for. A very a private. I mean, they kept you know they kept private through GDPR. But fraudsters, as soon as they get to that level of the application, they're gone because they yeah. can't they can't showcase their identity. You know, so oh well, we can't do that. So we go through a deep dive before you get certified, and once you become certified, you get your logo, which your ID number is linked to your IPRAC profile. So you can use your IPRAP profile as a marketing tool to send potential guests to it. And from there, they can verify you and then register their booking and ensure all their payments. So basically, okay. we're not just a, a logo that says they are credible. We're guaranteeing that any money you pay to a member is guaranteed against fraud. Yeah, I think that, that did a lot to convince me because I... You know, I answered getting to know you guys from a situation I'm not trusting you to start. So, you know, I, I came in skeptical. I'm saying, okay, well, what what are these guys doing, and yeah. and does this really work, and, and what is what is the setup? And um, when I find out that yeah, you do have this system where you can guarantee a reservation, meaning like if this does turn out to be a fraud, yeah. um, you've got an underwriter that's saying they'll return 100% of my booking if I lose it to an IPRAC certified member. Yeah. Um, so if someone's willing to do that, then okay, like. That actually makes sense. And someone's looked at what you're doing and said, okay, I can underwrite that business. Um, so that, that did a lot to convince me that, that what you're doing is, is yeah, valid. The thing is, Andrew, that's the only way because otherwise it just becomes a, a logo on a website that's, that's just talk. It's like anybody can put a logo on a website and say, look what we've achieved. But if there's no accountability behind yeah. what that logo stands for, then it isn't worth anything. 
you know, and that's why when we were building IPRAC, it was important for us to work out a way where each logo could be unique. Yeah. So each, each member's logo is unique to them because their ID number is embedded in their logo. And so I can look that up on a separate system, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it can't be copied. So yeah. anybody typing into the IPRAC website, that ID number, that it's not going to match. So they can't register the booking. They can't see that that's not who I'm booking with. So there's a way to be accountable, but then you're given the consumer the, the you're given the consumer the confidence that if something happens, which it never has to date, they are insured. So that gives them the confidence to book. It's all Airbnb do. It's all Booking.com do. They give the guest an opportunity to if something goes wrong, yeah. they've got a backup. When you're booking direct, if something goes wrong, where's the backup? This is why people are so uncertain about direct booking. And uncertainty is the killer of conversion. We all know that. So removing the uncertainty is you can have the best website in the world and you can have all the best structure in the payment system. But if that person doesn't have any guarantee, yeah. there's still a risk. And booking a high-risk product like a short-term rental is all about risk you know taking away the risk taking away the yeah. uncertainty and the way to do that is by not it's very easy for us as businesses or hosts to say look i'm trustworthy look at my reviews i mean you know when you can say a third party verification platform has verified me he's my credentials check them out check them yeah. out on their website that goes a long way for a host to think, okay, I'm, I, I trust this company. I don't know yeah. them. I don't know them. I've never, I've never booked with them before. But for some reason, they've gone through this robust certification process. I, I can trust them because our payments are guaranteed. There's no and difference is, what Airbnb do. Yeah, this is kind of the sentiment we took uh, when we designed Direct Premium because we did want to have this, this hybrid that took some of the risk mitigation that the OTAs provide. Um, so we are the merchant of record uh, on the direct premium bookings, which means they, I guess, does have someone to go to. It's a direct booking, but it goes through our company. And so if they do have a bad experience or there is, you know, a reason that, you know, they get defrauded for some reason, that does come back to us. We are liable for that transaction. Um, yeah. We also have the direct basic line, which is more of what traditionally is direct booking, which is you have payment processing hooked up to a website. Um, and so we, we do provide that for hosts that they might have kind of their own tech stack as far as the, the services they use. They don't want to have everything just redesigned to what we do with direct premium, but direct premium is we understand that these risks are there and that's why we have the guest vetting. That's why we have the damage protection uh, from Superhog on every booking um, and we're the merchant record. So yeah, we, we take some of that. Um, and yeah, and I think, I think we definitely have a longer conversation between our companies about what we can do yeah, um, sure. yeah. Um, because yeah, that's obviously like mm. they, your, 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 your potential guests can fall out of the funnel anywhere. Um, so, you know, you got to kind of look at every option from, you know, your socials to your site, we have a lot of people that end up building their own site. I think what we have are kind of starter sites. So yeah. a lot of our hosts are smaller scale. Maybe they haven't really done a lot with direct booking before. We are a great way to experiment, see if that's what you want to do. If you're good at it, if you want to invest more time, and then they end up building their own site and having more content and you know linking in their socials. Um, we have a, a booking widget that they can use that still links to our calendar. They can completely control the, where they go with their site, so we don't we don't prevent them from it growing beyond our sites uh, by any way. Um, and I think yeah, there's something. Could... Guests, I mean, as them sites are working in a way where there's trust built into it, and there's and the customer journey is seamless, then there's no reason why it can't work, you know. But but you have to be able to do your due diligence on. I mean, consumers they don't want to do due diligence; they don't have time. Yeah, it's not their job. They want to be able to be able to get into a product, verify that it's trusted, and then move forward. Yeah, not find any red have, flags. Yeah, and if they mm. if they have if they have to start you know going around and doing you know it's enough, it's too much work. It's all of a sudden their subconscious mind switched off and they've said no, we're not going here. We're not booking this, and obviously that's a booking loss. So you've got to look from from a website. You've got to look at the journey from somebody arriving on your website to checking out on your website, whether you do instant booking or not, or even if it's like you're inquiry-based only, you've got to get somebody who's going to arrive on your website, 
You've got to build the trust, introduce the product and get them to either book or send you an inquiry. That's, the, that's what you're trying to achieve. And at some point in that journey, you could lose that guest yep. at any particular time through not having the right trust signals, through not having the right trust content, by having you know, the, wrong, the, the wrong photos in the wrong place. And nobody really wants to navigate through a website that's complicated. I mean, you know, Amazon, look, I mean, look at Amazon. It's not the best looking website in the world, is it? No. But look what it does. You're on, you get it. They've already built the brand trust. You're on it, you book it, you get it. Arrives in two days or maybe one day and that's it. You know, yeah. you've got to try to create that within your own brand and make it seamless and not try to complicate the situation but it all starts with trust because if you get the trust, then you've got the opportunity to convert. But if you don't have the trust, then you're not going to convert. So how, I mean, I, th I would say like then, then the challenge uh, for what you guys are doing is that you have to build a brand too, right? You have to build a trust yeah. brand for your own company. Yeah. And so sure. how do you, yeah. How do you work with hosts to basically present your brand? Because I, I, if people are not, not familiar with IPRAC, they're also kind of starting from a position of no trust with another company now. So how do they work through that? And I saw one, one question in the audience. Um, do you have much of a presence in the U S so kind of getting at the same thing. It's like, yeah. I get the IPRAC we'll get badge on my off. site. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the U S we, when we started in 2016, we um, you know, we were starting from scratch and we were the first, we were the first ever like trust accreditation to come onto the market. So the first three years, were very difficult in terms of explaining what we did, you know? And I think that was, that was probably the toughest three years. I think once people understood the product that we'd built and what in the, in the problem that we were solving, then people started to get it. And now I, I would say it was probably from around 2000 and end of 2018, 2019 was when we really started to build our, you know, and that was mainly in Europe. So I would say for the question of the, the person who, about the US, we're growing in the US. I think we've got like 1,900 members across the US. But it's, it's fast growing as we introduce the, the solution of the, the, um, the fact that we guarantee the bookings. You know, I think that's one of the, for anybody looking to, but to go back to the marketing point of view, the, the, the question is, I would, our biggest marketers are our members because right. of the product that we give them. It's in their best interest to talk about the benefits of IPRAC because of them, them being a member. So a lot of our members are doing a lot of the marketing for us because they're promoting the fact that they're IPRAC certified. And also they are throwing down the, the, the booking, you know, the, the general, the, um, the, uh, the booking confirmation, you know, so they can say, Register your booking, and yep. all, and you're insuring your you're insuring your payments. So yep. as soon as you say that to a guest, but they've got a guarantee. Yeah, yeah, you're introducing the iPad brand. So we've done since 2016, we've done something like 860,000 registered bookings across all of the members. So that's a lot of that's a lot of people register their booking, and that's a lot of people who have not been frauded. Yeah. And I, I think, I think if we end up doing something together with, with our direct booking offering, I think we could probably really spike that registration because um, you know, what you guys have is you can, you can, you make a booking IPRAC site, you go in and you, you kind of have to repeat that information into a form to get that guarantee. Yeah. I think we could automate a lot of that, um, yeah. which would be, which would be cool. Um, so I guess if I'm a host and I'm evaluating your company, like it's just, a, it's an ROI question, right? It's like, okay, I pay for the certification what's, what's that going to do? Am I, you know, less people are going to fall out of the funnel. What's, how do you, how do you pitch like the ROI on working with IPRAC? Like it's very simple. I mean, when we, when we built it, we built it in a way so that it was affordable. I mean, if you, if you talk about like a private owner, who's got one property to become, you know, IPRAC certified, it's like 119, it's like 200 pounds a year. So that's about what, 240, $240, $50 for the year. Yeah. And that's like un unlimited, unlimited bookings. So if you've got, if you're a busy host and you've got like a thousand bookings a year, 
then you yeah. can then thousands of your guests can very can guarantee their booking through the iPad for free. So you, the guests aren't paying for that service. So you're as a host, you're basically allowing your guests as a, a free insurance policy for free. You're so, doing it, yeah, you're doing a thousand bookings, you're doing at least a million in revenue. So the two hundred dollars is is a drop in the bucket. Yeah, I mean, I would um, say anybody who's IPRAC certified and they convert one booking because of that membership, it's paid for it because. An agency is 495, no, 449 pounds. So that's, let's say, five, $500 for the year. And that some, of our agents, some of our agents have 20, 30, 40, 50 properties. So they must be doing like, I don't know, 1,000, 1,500 bookings a year across, the, across their portfolio. Yep. And all of, the, all, of the member, all of their guests who use the registered booking is all guarantees for them. So they're building also, while they're doing that, they're building their reputation as, like, everybody likes to do a booking, but until you leave, you can really only validate how good that experience was. Do you know what I mean? So, and if you can turn around and say, well, this was an IPRAT member, and this experience was fantastic, that's because they they trusted the professional. So this is like, re this is really good for the, for the industry because when people start seeing the iprat logo on other websites then they start to trust the people who've got the iprat logo because yeah you get a network verify, effect yeah. yeah we only verify legitimate professionals so i mean it's like it, it it makes way for for the industry to grow in the right way and that's and that's all we're trying to achieve we're trying to differentiate all the professionals and and good operators to be over this side so that consumers can have an easy decision to make of, I can book directly through an OTA, whatever, through this IPRAP member, because I know everything's okay. And that's what yeah. it's got to be. It's got to be quick, seamless, and affordable for everybody. Yeah. And that's what it is. Yeah, it's not just because direct is is cheaper. It, you also have to convince convince them of trust um i think we're we're pretty close to this part of of the uh master class wrapping up i'm going to ask you maybe one more question and then we can move to q a so go ahead and and get your questions in um if you want guys um so we've talked uh we've talked about iprac we've talked about trust marketing um let's just bring it real practical for people uh, maybe if we can do like two different buckets so someone that's just starting out like if you can do some tips and tricks on yeah, I guess trust marketing, like I think people are familiar with product marketing and familiar with what they do through Airbnb. Yeah. Um, what are the easy low hanging fruit that they can get, get started? And then maybe for our experienced audience members that are already running a business, um, already have a good brand built, lots of properties. What, where do they go to the next level with trust marketing? Um, well, Not I a softball question. Yeah, <laughs> I'll try to unpack all that. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think well, I think if you're just starting off and you're like working on Airbnb, I think I think a lot of people when you're on like an OTA, you do tend to feel and you you you're kind of riding off the brand trust of of the OTA like Airbnb or Booking.com because basically you're just becoming really you're just a supplier to a bigger brand. So like you list your property on Airbnb, but basically people are going onto Airbnb because they trust Airbnb. So even on even, even if you're just an OTA operator and you haven't got your own direct booking website, Airbnb is a saturated market, okay? It's like there's a lot of properties within your area. There's a lot of properties within your, you know, size scale in terms of bedrooms. So you've got to stand out in even on an OTA. So I think you've also got to look at your profile on an OTA and see what that looks like from a trust point of view. Or is that more product focused in terms of your description and how you provide yourself as like who you are as a host? Like, are you talking always about the product or are you talking about who you are as a host and the values that you have around customer service? So I think people are already there on your, on your um, profile of Airbnb, let's say, right? So that you already know that they're looking to book accommodation. So that's not the issue. You're not trying to convert them to like come and book something. They're already there for a reason. So the time now is to decide whether this, this guest's got 10 options here on Airbnb. How can I make mine the one that they, you know, that they book? And 
a lot of the time your pricing might be the same as others. So what, what's your USP? And I think when I've read some of the Airbnb profiles, they're very poor. You know, like they don't, they don't sound very inviting in terms of like, they don't sound very professional or like, I'm really going to have a great experience here. So I would say that you should really work on your profiles and your property photographs and how you present yourself as a brand, even though you're on Airbnb. Definitely. You yeah, know, I, even, I, yeah. Yeah. You've got it. Even if you're on your own, you've still got a brand to protect. Well, you've still got a brand to build. When you've got a brand to pitch, if you're talking about direct, right? I mean, that's a lot of the lead gen that's going to come to your direct site is going to go through an OTA. And I mean, I do this as well as a consumer and I'll see, I'll see a name on a sign or I'll see a name that I know is a brand and I can Google that. Yeah. Um, and I can probably book cheaper directly, yeah. directly for you. Um, I was talking to the guys from Boostly uh, recently on a podcast and he had the thing, yeah, get a coffee cup with your, you know, with your name on it and a photo yeah. um, because, you know, Obviously, the OTAs are, are, are sensitive and, and, and savvy to this as well. Um, you know, sneak it in there and people know what signals you're sending. Um, yeah. But yeah, you're, you're selling a brand. You're giving a name to it. Yeah, it's clever. And then it's a clever you, need to, you need to get the .com, you know, or the, you know, a nice URL that has your brand in it. So it ranks highly in search results. Um, and then obviously, like with what we're doing with our hospitable sites, you can do a custom domain, a custom subdomain on that. So it's easy. You need to, that's part of that. OTA to direct booking flow is is selling your brand, convincing people that's a, a trustworthy experience, and yeah. then pivoting them to direct um, yeah, through absolutely. through the right tools. And I mean, and I think a lot of a lot of operators miss have a misconception of this um, converting an OTA booking into a direct booking, because I think a lot of people just take it as a given that it's going to happen, and that's not that's a very naive way of thinking. You've got a great opportunity to convert an OTA booking who's staying in your premises or your property you've got a fantastic opportunity to introduce your personal brand but don't think just because you do that that they're automatically going to book direct because that's just naive so you've got to you you if you want to look at converting ota bookings into into direct bookings then there's a lot of work to do while they're in your care you, yeah. you know what i mean you can't yeah. just expect them to think oh well that's great you know, I've had a great stay. I'll book direct next time because they won't. Because if they've had a great stay, nothing went wrong. And a lot of people have that mentality of if nothing's broken, why fix it? So yeah. if they booked through Airbnb, everything went well. They arrived at the property. You as the host or the property manager checked them in. They had a great experience, checked out, went home, told the friends everything went well. What's there to change? Yeah. Why would you change something that's went really well? So you've got to think about why would they want to book direct? So that's when you start thinking about your values and introducing your brand while they're in your property. And then you've got to get their direct email address. And there's tools to do that. But yeah. then you've got to get that email address and not just throw a product at them because that's not going to work either. Then you've got to start building that trust marketing. So you've got to start talking about, again, about your values, again, you know, about who you are as a brand. So there's a way to do, to convert OTA bookings into direct, but there's work to be done. So if you think it's a given, don't think that. You've got to start looking at strategies, how you can convert it the right way. And it is about being patient and not thinking that this is just an overnight thing. Yeah, now you've got a lot of processes running. Oh yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I've got my rental agency in Cannes and I started that like 23 years ago. We've never used an OTA, never. And we've, we manage like 250 properties. We work with clients like Google, Twitter, MTV, Spotify. We do all these global brand accommodation because they trust us. And we've worked heavily on building that trust because trust works. So It only took you 23 years. <laughs> it, it, well, it's still, it's ongoing. There's no, there's no yeah. destination to trust. That's the yep. thing. There isn't a destination. You don't get there and say, right now I'm trusted. Because yep. trust doesn't work that way. Trust is built and it's continuous because you can lose it at any time just through a mistake. So, you you know, trust is built through delivering. You Consistently know, yeah, over time. Consistency yep. and communication. You know, a lot of people lack, lack really quality professional communication with their guests. And that's a big, and that's a big downfall a lot of agencies have. You know, they, they don't 
they leave a lot of their their guests out in the cold from from the day of booking, and then they contact them like ten days prior to arrival. But there's like sometimes six weeks between a between a booking and a in a conversation. Yeah, that's wrong. You know, so there's a lot there's a lot of work to do in the industry about building trust. But I think once you understand that trust is important, I think most property managers and hosts are intelligent enough to know how to go about in implement it into their business. And that's yeah. what you've got to do. Cool. Well, it was a nice coda to that, that part of our, our uh, masterclass here. I think we should be fair to our audience and jump into the questions that they have. Yeah. Uh, first one is from Kristen. And I, and I think we've covered some of the, these elements. She was very early to the question here, but what is the process for a private owner to become vetted or certified? At, what, at that point, do you have an IPRAC vetted graphic we can use on our private direct booking sites? Um, repeat the second part. I, the, I, uh, the, well, she's talking about the graphic. Like what is the certification process? And then they get the the like logo that can't be copied. Oh, yeah, it's okay, numbered. Yeah, sorry, it's yeah. it's serial number. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So you go through the process, and once you become approved, there's uh, the process of the application, which is all of your personal details, the address of the property, proof of ownership. So there's quite a few items that you've got to provide. For us to be able to do the due diligence and do the process but once you become approved you then get your iprax logo which is your unique logo with your membership id in the logo then you get also your iprax certificate which shows the date that you were certified and that is valid for 12 months and that's updated automatically on our system when you renew because it's all digital mm -hmm. and you and basically you also get your link to your profile and the profile basically shows around 10 photos of your brand when you were when you are when you joined the name of the owners the last five digits of the bank accounts the verified stripe verified email verified phone email but the the profiles are really nice they're really like marketable you know they're yeah. very uh, quite sexy to be honest <laughs> so you know, get 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 yourself one of them but and then once you've got that they they become your marketing tools so you put your logo on your website, somewhere visible, of course, and you talk about it. You know, yeah. you, I think that's one of the things that people forget. Like, you know, you don't buy a gym membership, don't go and expect to lose weight. You know, you've got to get the logo, get the certificate, and then implement the tools into your business so that when you are sending emails out, it's in your, your logo is in your email signature. It's, you've, in, you've inputted it into your contract. You've got a trust page on your website talking about your accreditation, yeah. your values. So it's all about implementing it, but that's what you get once you become approved. Cool. Thank you. We've got a question from Mira, which is for Hospitable, so I'll take it. What payment okay. processor is Hospitable using for direct booking sites? And Chris Dwyer, I recognize that name, has helpfully answered Stripe, which is true. We use Stripe for direct basic. Um, we use uh, a payment processor called Agion for direct premium. So it's, it's a different process. Stripe. Uh, sorry, for basic, you bring your own Stripe account. You can connect multiple Stripe accounts if your clients have them. Um, on the premium side, you just connect a bank account. So it's it's as easy as just adding your name. And then we'll give you a verification link to do the KYC through through Agin. And yeah, that's also something that you can add your property owners to if you're a property manager. And we've got split pay coming very soon. So that'll be nice. It'll go straight to your bank account 24 hours after check-in. Um, so two different setups for for basic and premium. Uh, let's see. Um, I heard of address. Okay. So I think David had a question about, yeah, basically for people that haven't heard about IPRAC, how does, how does that help my, my ad trust? If someone, if no one's heard of you. And I think we kind of touched on that, that actually, once you go through IPRAC, the host is kind of motivated to share the story, make that part of their trust story and say, Hey, this is this company. They do a third party process. It's rigorous. Here's what I had to go through. And now you see that badge on my site. That's what that means. So actually the host or you're making that part of your, um, your direct booking site is to say, Hey, look at that logo down there. This is what happened. I mean, it's quite simple. It's like, how, how do you market your best property? You know, you tell people <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and that's really, that's really how you go about like showing that you're credible when you are showcasing the trust logo on your website. Some, some, some of the guests might look at it and go, what is that? And they might ask for it, but it's how you 
how you structure your website to talk about your accreditation, why trust is important. Because this I tell a lot of people that you should have a trust page on your website. Everybody should have a trust page. And this is not an about us page. This is a dedicated trust page when you can talk about the values of trust. Because if you can get people onto your trust page and showcase your IPRAC certification, what the benefits are, why you invested in it, why it's important to you. When a guest is on your website doing their own due diligence and having a read through your trust page, they're going to understand that you're a very trust oriented company. So, you know, we do, we do our own marketing, of course, but there's no better person to market to their own community and own guest or potential guest that they're IPRAC approved. If you become IPRAC approved and you fail to tell your potential guests, then that's like a, that's a big error, you know? So you've got to become approved and then implement the tools into your marketing. And then I believe that is when you start to increase your conversion of direct bookings. Cool. All right, we have a question from David Roberts, another hospitable customer. Hi, David. Uh, any plans to integrate with PayPal? Um, yes, thanks to your feedback. Um, yeah, correct. Stripe does not operate in Costa Rica where you're at. And I'm sorry about that. I thought Stripe had, had better coverage than that. So yeah, for direct premium, we are getting set up first only in the United States. We're going to be in Australia soon, hopefully in the UK soon. Direct basic, available anywhere Stripe supports which is not Costa Rica. I'm sorry about that. And we will look into getting PayPal set up. Um, that is a, a fair fair bit of feedback there. All right, uh, let's see. Tyler Tyler Mounts, I hope I'm correct, uh, pronouncing that correctly. How is the IPRAC logo, how is it that the IPRAC logo can't be copied? Well, basically, if you look at an IPRAC logo, the unique ID is in the logo. So somebody can take that logo and put it on their website, okay? But if when you try to go through the process of registering your booking, then that's not going to work because you have to use the ID number to register the booking. And when you register the ID number, the guest gets a copy, IPRAC get a copy, and also the host gets a copy, the member. So it's a three-way link inside. So you can't just you put the, if you put the IPRAC logo on the, somebody else's IPRAC logo on your website, then the ID number is not going to match who you are. Yeah. So you're going to be found out pretty quick that nobody can register a booking because as soon as they type in the ID number, it could come up a member in the UK and you're in the US. So you've got your ID number is linked to your profile where the guests register their booking. Yeah. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't have a profile if you don't have an IPRAC account. Well, exactly. So that's, yeah, that's kind yeah. of the other part that they can't fake is that you yeah, can't you put can't a profile on, on their on IPRAC website. Yeah unless yeah. you've been validated. Yeah. Um, I'd love that. I, I'm going to go off a little bit of a tangent here, but I have a personal um, animosity towards the, the notary process. And you know, that's how we validated documents. Uh, we still do in some countries. Yeah. Um, you go to someone and you convince them that these documents are real and they put a stamp on it. So some governments um, are replacing that with a QR code, which yeah. is a much better mechanism to trust because it's you know, just encoding a URL. But yeah. if, if I have like your business license and it's got a QR code on it, I can scan that. And then I go to the government website for that country and I can see that it's, about, it's exactly what you guys are doing yeah. uh, with, with your logo. Yeah. Like this is so much better. This is a, a, a completely anti-fraud. It cannot be fr uh, fraudulently you know, done. I, I can't put my business license on this government mm -hmm. website unless it's real. Yeah. Um, and that's so much better than notary. Sorry if there are any notaries on the, on the call, um, but this is this is a better it's solution. It's true. <laughs> um, because that's why that's why a just the logo is just not enough. I yeah. mean, you know, you, you know, I'll go on a bit of a tangent here, but you know, ABTA, ABTA is one is the is the travel is the travel accreditation for in the UK. Okay, and when we were doing a lot of research on fraudulent websites, ABTA the ABTA logo was one of the most used logos to build trust on a fraudulent website. We're, we're ABTA certified. That's what these fraudulent webs, but there was no way to go onto the ABTA website and check whether that, that was the, that was right. the case. So there's no so ID anybody can copy it. Yeah, there's no ID number linked to that particular member. So as soon as you go onto the IPRAC website and type in the ID number, you're straight onto that member's profile, it matches. So you know who you you know that you're dealing with the same person. Yeah. But also, you, as soon as you click on register booking, that email goes to the member, goes to IPRAC, and it also goes to the, to the guest. So that's not going to happen either. 
So all of a sudden it's yeah. going to get it's going to get flagged as a as a fraudulent operator and nobody's going to book. So you can't just say I'm going to take the iPad logo, put it on my website, and I'm going to get everybody to trust me. That's just not going to work. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I did a bit of sales in my life. And if people are asking questions about price, that means you've got an interested customer. So that's a good okay. sign. We have a couple of questions about price. Um, I'll combine them. Thank you, Kristen. Um, what is the cost to become IPRAC certified for a private owner? We can cover uh, agency as well. Is the price recurring annual price or a one-time price? It says per year, but once you're certified, you have to recertify annually as well. Yeah. So basically the price for a private owner is 199 uh, pounds 50 for the year it's auto renewed but it's you receive an email like one month prior to um to expiration which basically asks you to verify the current situation of your profile to make sure that there's no changes to to be made if there's changes to be made you make the changes and submit it again and then we make the changes and and re-verify and same for an and same for an agency it is Four hundred and forty nine pounds fifty for the year, and that's doesn't matter whether you've got two properties or a hundred properties or a five hundred properties. So that's the cost of the of the of, of the two, and it's all all renewed, yeah. But it's a price that you pay every year. Okay, let's got a few more questions. Actually, several more questions to get through. So we'll try and speed through them. Uh, Chris was asking for a step by step process to yeah really level up. So Chris already has a pretty good setup. Um, he's done the basics. Um, and yeah, in the comments, Dave was helping him out. Uh, Boostly.co.uk. Um, they do custom sites. Again, we spoke with them last week or two weeks ago, and they have great educational content. Like follow them on YouTube. Um, they do a lot of best in class, um, behaviors that you can implement in your direct booking. Um, so definitely check them out. Um, I don't know. I think that's, yeah, that's, that's the best yeah, feedback Mark there. Simpson, he's the founder of Boostly. Yeah. Been, Mark, Mark is great. Yeah. Yeah. He's doing great work. Um, did he say they process payments? Um, so Patricia, I think for your question, um, payment processing is something we do with, with our own stuff on direct. So if you have like a hospitable account, um, we, yeah, let me talk about the timeline on that actually, because we've got about 150 people in our pilot audience right now for direct. Um, we are two weeks away from opening that to general audience in a rolling kind of maybe over a four week period. We'll roll that out to hundred percent of our users. And then you can self-serve, opt-in, decide you want to do direct basic, direct premium. Um, you can get your site set up, your payout, payment processing set up. Once you're ready to publish your site and start taking bookings, that's when you would start paying us for, for that feature. And we do the payment processing. And yeah, I think we're definitely going to look into what we do with IPRAC to, to make that an easy process to kind of marry the direct sites we have with, with what they're doing on, on the vetting. Uh, David Roberts. What does guarantee your booking mean uh, for the customer and the host? Can you explain this process? And I think we've touched on this, so we need like the 30-second version if you can. Yeah, yeah. So basically, when you when a, when a member's already booked with you directly and paid you, they can go onto the, IPRAT web, onto the IPRAT website or your profile and click on the button, register your booking. They fill in the details of the booking, which is the dates, the price that you've, that you've paid, and the address of the property that you've booked, and then you submit it. And basically, once you've submitted that, they get a certificate of guarantee. The host gets a copy of that. So they know that the booking has been registered. And obviously IPRAC are, are aware of it as well. So it's a three-way email chain that goes out. But basically the guest gets a, a certificate that guarantees the booking. And on that certificate, it explains all of the information about what, what to do if something happens and all of the numbers and et cetera, et cetera. But it's, they, they, get, they get a specific bit of, you know, they get a certificate. So yeah. it actually makes them feel like they've got something of value. Well, and the host, the host gets to go on their site and say 100% guarantee, uh, yeah. you know, anti-fraud guarantee on every booking, even if the guest decides to act, you know, exercise that right to go, you know, yeah. register their booking or not, yeah. your marketing becomes, you know, guaranteed uh, anti-fraud, you know, yeah. um, which you can say more, more marketing than, than I just did. Yeah. Uh, all right. We're going to power, power through a few more here. Um, got two questions I'm going to combine. Um I had a question about Louise as far as like the, the industry itself. What other certifications are out there other than IPRAC? I travel a ton. I haven't really noticed any certifications. And someone else asked, you said you have a unique verification process. Um, how do you yeah, differ from others? And I think we did kind of touch on some of the ones that are uh, yeah, often think, copied. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we differ, we, we, we differ from others because there isn't anybody else who does what we do. Um, 
There is other certifications out there that do touch on a little bit of safety, um, you know, but COVID, good to go COVID and things like that. But there's nobody going through an application process where we verify every everybody's credentials to see whether they can become approved. So I think a lot of the other people who are doing certain certifications, they're just not really in depth enough, in depth enough, you know. So, you know, if you don't pass our process, you don't get it. So we're not we're not just giving them out like sweets, you know. <laughs> so you've no. got to go through the process, and if you don't, and you don't, and you don't, and you're not, you don't succeed, then you don't, then you then you receive an email saying that you didn't. So there's nobody doing what we do. So we're unique to the industry in terms of a trust accreditation that guarantees you know, payments that are made to our members. There's nobody doing it. So we are unique in that way. Okay. Tyler asks, can people who have booked an IPRAC property search for other IPRAC properties by location? No, no. We're not a, mem we're not a directory. We're a membership base only. So we're, we've got certain protection laws with the GDPR and our ICO. So we're not, a, we're not registered as a directory. So you can't do like a search. Of like see where all of the where all of the um the members are so you we're a private members so we can't just like share like and have it on as a directory so we do have a i mean for members we have an in, we're, we're building like an, an internal chat room so that members can in, can connect directly through a chat but you can't you can't search specifically for an ipad member but we are building the travel desk and that's go that's going out really well at the minute. So that we are going to start building a travel desk within IPRAC so that people can come to IPRAC and actually say, look, I'm going to Puerto Rico. I want to rent a villa. Could you could you put us in touch with one of your members? And we're building okay. that out at the minute, which will probably be, I think probably by the end of June, we should be launching the travel desk out to the to 28 countries. Okay. Uh, very detailed question here from Robert. You said part of the process is ownership. Is yeah. there a way to become certified if your business model is rental arbitrage? Yes, but that's it. but you're an agency then, you're not a private yeah. owner, because a private owner has only one property. Yeah. But if you're an agency, you're obviously a registered company. But if you're not a registered company, then we can't verify you. So you have to be a registered company operating within the short-term rental space, like a limited company or an LLC or a or you know whatever country that you're in, but we'll be able to verify the business, how you manage the properties that you manage, whether you own them, whether they're rent to rent, whether they're you know rental arbitrage or partnerships, the properties that you manage under your company or on your website are verified by the IPRAC approval system. So you have to be a company. Okay. Um... You okay to run a couple minutes over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, if anyone needs to leave, go ahead. You're not obligated to stay. Chris and I will stay for a little bit longer and, and power through a couple more here. Uh, Christine asks, how long does it take to get verified? Uh, the application will probably take you, um, you know, if, you, if you're computer literate, probably 25 minutes to fill it all in and submit it. And the approval process is about anywhere between five and 10 days. Okay. Um, question from, uh, Richard, if I get direct premium, who will be responsible for marketing my property? Just like with Airbnb, you will, Richard, um, we're taking the hybrid and the part that we're not keeping we're, the hybrid being, we take the, a lot of the risk mitigation that the OTA provides. Um, we're not doing the big marketing campaigns that, uh, you know, trickle down into host fees and things like that. That's where we save you money. So, um, if you look at direct premium and do a price comparison, we're generally 10 to 14% cheaper than Airbnb. Um, we're up to 45% cheaper than booking.com when you compare. And that's, you know, we are, we do have some fees to, to cover the, the auto host, the super hog, um, different, uh, guest verification and, and damage protection. We do, we're still a lot cheaper because we're not doing the marketing. Um, so that is kind of a, that that's part of your business is I am a host. I own some of my customers. I, I have my own CRM processes going. I have recurring guests. Um, I'm building a brand through, through trust, through product marketing, um, I don't need to pay an OTA to do marketing for me. That's that's kind of the whole sentiment of, of direct is 
you should own some of your customers. You know, a lot of your business will come through OTAs, but you also own customers and you shouldn't have to pay to remarket to them or at least pay someone else. Um, let's see, I'm gonna skip a couple that we've covered. Um, is IPRAC giving a discount to hospitable members? Oh, yes. did you, uh, <laughs> we, yeah, do you wanna cover saw, that announcement, Chris? Miles, Miles said that we would talk about this. Yeah, so for anybody who is inhospitable or who's been on this um, webinar, we are giving the um, one, two years for the price of one. Okay. And what's, do, do you have the code on, handy or you want me to, to shove that? Well, you can put it out in the notes. It's, um, yeah, that's easier, right? <laughs> yeah, put it in the notes. It's, I think it's, it's hospitable 23. No, incorrect. <laughs> no. I have a promo code hospitable DB101. Um, you Miles, if you, Miles will drop that in, in chat put for that us. In Miles. Yeah. Miles, our head of marketing, has been quietly uh, yeah. lurking in the background, and uh, he'll drop that in. Hospitable DB101, so hospitable space DB101. You can use that promo code two as, years as for the price of, of one. It'll be live as it'll be live <laughs> don't as do it now. Tomorrow. Uh, that'll be that'll be live tomorrow. Uh, last two questions, and then we are honestly done. Tyler asks, uh, does Hospitable offer something similar as a guarantee to guests? Um, Direct premium, in a sense, yes, because we are the merchant of record. We do kind of serve that role of the OTA of saying, hey, if you do have a problem with this host, if it is a fraudulent booking, we are the liable merchant, meaning you, if you file a chargeback, that goes to us, that goes to a, a verified business. It doesn't go to um, just a random you know, guy with a Stripe account that has to file a chargeback, might not be good for it. It goes to uh, a liable merchant of record. Like we had to fund our payment processing account for direct premium, put in over half million dollars to fund the liabilities for that. Um, so there is a similar kind of trust element there. It's not what IPRAC does. I think we're going to look into doing uh, something with IPRAC. I think it makes a lot of sense uh, for us to be verifying host in the same way that we're verifying guests. So yeah, last question goes to Nicole. What is the max dollar amount you guarantee? One million dollars. Who's that? Who's that question to who? That's for you. As for me, we don't. I think so. Yeah, under, you're the one. You're the one guaranteeing reservations. No, no, we're we're up to five hundred thousand. Our underwriter okay. will guarantee up to five hundred thousand pounds. Okay. So that's so the equivalent. It's, in any it's more. It's more in dollars. Yeah, <laughs> Six hundred, yeah, six fifty, seven hundred. I mean, you know, unless you're coming to the the Cannes Film Festival, you're probably not going to get to that price anyway. Yeah. Yeah. When you talk about, yeah, chargeback liability and refunds on a 500,000 pound booking, that's, that's some serious liability to be carrying. Yeah. So yeah. I think we're done from here. We went over time. Thank you all okay. for everyone that stayed. We had a lot of people in the webinar. Um, this did get recorded. So we're going to be sharing that on the socials. Um, take note of the discount, discount code, sorry, hospitable space DB 101 live from tomorrow. And uh, thank you all so much, uh, Andrew, Chris, and Miles here signing off from Hospitable and IPRAC. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, everybody.